Welcome back to the Subspace Games YouTube channel. Today we're going to be talking about vectors. Um, now I wanted to go over vectors just because sometimes they can be confusing. Um, sometimes we use a vector, uh, you know, vector is commonly represented by three coordinates, x, y, and z. So sometimes a vector is a vector. Sometimes we call it a vector, but it's actually just a point. Um, sometimes that vector is referring to velocity of an object, sometimes it's referring to the axis, maybe the x-axis of an object. So it gets pretty confusing, especially when you throw in there normalizing and then you have cross products and dot products and all kinds of junk. Um, they're incredibly handy, that's why they're used so much in, in computer programming. But we need to make sure that we understand what's going on. Now I'm just going to do really basic stuff, just enough to get into what I'm trying to do with the chase cam. So I'm just going to talk about what a vector is and then we're going to talk about normalizing a vector and why that's handy. Now vectors are also kind of tricky because when we think of normal Euclidean um, you know coordinate systems we're talking about um, you know we're used to doing this kind of thing where we've got a line and um, here's another line and maybe it's the same length but it's a little bit further over. Now those two objects are completely different in Euclidean geometry, but when we're dealing with um, vectors, then vectors can be the same. So if we throw the little arrow caps on here, those vectors could be the same as long as they're going in the same direction and they're of the same magnitude. So let's talk about what a, what a vector basically is. A vector, and excuse my handwriting because I know it's atrocious, a vector is direction Ooh, that's awful. Direction and magnitude. So what do we mean by that? Well, direction is obviously, if we have an air, a line going up that way, it's going in that direction. Um, if it's going in uh, this way, then it's going in that direction. The magnitude is simply the distance from end to end. And so we can represent a lot of information there. Let's say that we're talking about the velocity of an object. Well, the velocity of an object, you can think of, you know, maybe we have a ball and it's going this direction. So we have the arrow and it's going that fast. So within a given unit of time, maybe it's going one, two, one, two, three, three units within a given amount of time. So we can tell it direction and we can tell uh, how fast it's going just from looking at that. So that's why we use vectors um, in our uh, graphics because we can we can kind of compress a whole lot of data in there with just one coordinate as you noticed um, well we haven't talked about it yet never mind let's talk about that here in a second. So vectors Let's say we have an object here, and like we had that ball, and we wanted to go in a certain direction at a certain speed. Um, let's think of this as the object within the game. So maybe this is the global coordinate system, X and Y. And so we have this object that's out here. Now you know from the last lesson that this object has its own little local coordinate system, right? So this is its own unit here it has its own coordinate system but it's also in reference to the global coordinate system in addition to that if this object is going in this direction there may be a vector that's associated with it if we say what's the velocity of this object well then we may get something like this now this line is uh, we're going over to and up to so two two so we could say the vector here is two comma two now in three dimensions, obviously we're going to have x, y, and z, but here we have x, we're going over two units, y, we're going up two, two units. So that could represent a vector right there. And so if we wanted to find out where this object's going to be in the next instant in time, we would take its current position in the global coordinate system, which let's say is, you know, right here, so it's about three and a half. And then it's up here, which is about, what, four and a half? Well, in the next unit of time, we're going to go over two and up two. So it would be, you know, 5.5 and 6.5. 
So it's a way that we can see where that object is. Well, so in the game, what we're going to do is we're going to take um, the ball, and we're going to have the ball traveling a certain velocity as it's going down the course. And we want to find out, because the idea behind the chase cam is that the chase cam is always going to be behind the ball. Now, one of the things that I tried to do from the beginning was I said, well, you know what, if it's always going to be behind the ball, then why can't I just use the coordinate system? So we talked about local coordinate systems. So if I have the ball and I have these coordinates coming out, the local coordinate system, and let's say this is the top down view, so this is going to be the Z axis, why can't I just tell the camera to take the ball and go out in the Z axis and just hang out back here behind the ball? So then it's always going to be behind it. Well, the problem is we had that slanted wall when the ball flies up here and hits this, the ball doesn't actually rotate when it ricochets off. It just comes up, hits the wall, and now it goes over in this direction. So what we end up having is, as the ball is traveling in this direction, instead of the camera being back here, the z-axis, because the ball didn't rotate, is still in this direction. So the camera is right here, and so it's traveling parallel with the ball, and it's not really much of a chase cam. It's more to the side cam, if there was such a thing. So what we have to do is the a dynamic object has a function that's pretty handy it's called get velocity and the velocity returns a vector which is x y and z in this case since we're doing the two-dimensional um, coordinate system we're going to just kind of call it x y so we have the ball it's traveling in this direction we get an x y vector out of it and so if I want to be behind the ball, what I have to do is I have to go in the opposite direction from the vector and plant the camera back here somewhere. So the issue that is though, if I want to be back behind the ball, let's say I want to be 10 units back, well I don't know how fast the ball is going to be going at any one time. And So if I just use the vector itself, let's say I take the vector and I just say, you know what, go negative 10 in the opposite direction. Well, if we we call what's what we do, are, we are doing what's called scaling the vector, and that's basically just taking like a unit measurement, like two, and multiplying it by all the um, the units. So if this was like let's say it was two two, and we want to scale it by two, well then we're going to end up with four four. So now we have a vector that's twice as long going in the same direction. Well, if I wanted to scale the vector backwards ten units, uh, you can't really do that with velocity because the velocity is going to be constantly changing at one minute maybe the velocity is 10 maybe it's you know going 10 10 or some variation of that so if I scale it 10 back you know then I'm going to be going 100 100 I'll be way back behind the ball maybe sometimes it's barely moving and so now I'm going to be up here at maybe two units behind the ball so that's where normalizing comes in handy and what it means to normalize a vector is it means that we're going to make the magnitude of the vector it's going to be one so if you normalize the vector this vector let's say it was it had been two two over two up to well we're gonna do some trigonometry and uh, well I don't know if it's trig it's been a while since I've been in math maybe it's just geometry but um, we're gonna go up one unit normalizing means you move the vector to the origin so we're going to zero zero and you're going to start here and you're going to go up one unit which is maybe about there so now we have this new vector it's based at the origin and it's going up so that the length of the line is one unit so what this does is because I'm always normalizing this vector um, it means that I'm all I'm getting is a direction out of it we've we've basically taken away the magnitude just made it one so now if I scale it since the length is 1 and I scale it, it's going to go back, let's say I scale it by 10, it's going to end up going 10 units. So if I do negative 10, then I'll end up being about 10 units back along this line. So that's what normalizing a vector does. It allows us to just be able to get the direction out of the vector. So velocity will return the magnitude or how fast it's going plus the direction it's going in but if we normalize that it gets rid of the magnitude and just gives us direction so in the code for the chase cam what I did was I got the velocity of the ball I normalized the velocity there's an actual function to normalize 
and then I just multiply it by negative 10 and it gave me a coordinate somewhere back here so I just took the court the, the position of the ball in the global coordinate system and I just added this vector to it and since the vector was going in a negative direction it was going this way I end up with a unit that's exactly 10 units behind the ball and as the ball moves or turns or goes in any direction since the velocity is always the direction the ball is moving in no matter what the coordinates are saying if if the ball's x coordinate is pointing one direction and it changes and moves or whatever it doesn't matter because all the velocity cares about is the direction that the ball is traveling in so I will always keep that camera 10 units behind so that's kind of the basics I'm not a very good teacher and I apologize I don't have very good handwriting this has probably all been a scramble but this is the best way I know of, of doing it it's a lot easier for me to just jot it down and make you suffer through my handwriting than to try and do some drawings and everything I just I just can't work that way I need to be able to do more hands-on so I hope this wasn't more confusing um, just some simple stuff so far there's a lot more that you can do with vectors and we'll approach it as we need to but I just wanted to give you some basics of this is the stuff that I went through to try and figure out how do I make the camera follow the ball um, and so next we're going to be going into the game we're going to watch we're going to look at the code we're going to see how it works and and how um, what the result is so i hope you stick with us and i'll see you in the next video